Hey everybody, what is up? We're going inside the goat pool today and check out what I dug up. This is an old surfing magazine of Kelly Slater. It's actually from 1988. He's still got hair and he's surfing for sun deck and he's surfing in a wave pool. That's freaking crazy, man. I remember when I was a kid, I couldn't wait till those showed up in the mail. It was like Instagram, only updated every 30 days. So we're gonna break down Kelly's wave pool and look at some clips I've compiled. But before we do any of that, have a look at this image. This is Big Surf in Arizona. This place opened in 1969, almost 50 years before Kelly showed us the surf ranch. This is amazing and probably the inspiration for the movie North Shore. If you haven't seen the movie North Shore, do yourself a favor and rent it tonight. It's so bad it's good. And I want to hear in the comments below, those of you who remember who played Lance Burkhart. It's so funny. So I went into a wave pool rabbit hole to dig up some clips and some information. All the links to that is down in the description below. Now, believe it or not, there's a whole website dedicated to wave pools called wavepool.mag, which I pulled some information from for this piece. But I think the best thing I found was a complete wave pool episode on Weird Waves. If you guys haven't seen Weird Waves with Dylan Graves, it's pretty cool. Um, I'll leave a link to that as well in the description below. But in this wave pool episode, they have a guy named Tom Lockfeld, who's like the Dr. Evil of wave pools. And he's involved in a wave pool in Palm Springs that you may have seen Mason Ho surfing. That may become my local break pretty soon. It looks fun, man. The manager is Shane Magnuson, who was involved in the Texas wave pool. Speaking of the Texas wave pool, this is a spot where new airs are being invented, it seems like, every day. I've got a link below to the X Games Stab High event in 2019, which has some incredible performances. But I think the most impressive thing I've seen from the Texas Wave Pool is Sierra Kerr. You should take two minutes and watch her surf in the link that I have in the description below. Here's an example right here. She is unbelievable. Like, I'm not afraid of the Brazilian storm anymore because here comes Sierra Kerr. So there's several different methods to create waves in a wave pool. One of them is the plunger method, which is like throwing a rock in the middle of a pond and concentric waves come out from the center. And that's what Aki uses in his pool. The neat thing about it is when you look around, it's like being in Kandui in the Mentawi Islands. There's waves everywhere at different levels. And that's sort of what Aki's pool looks like to me. I think... The one that holds a lot of promise is the Korean wave garden or wave garden technology in general. And there's a fluff piece down below that's interesting to watch. I believe what they're using is a pneumatic device. It's blowing air to create waves and it gives you a lot of waves. And these two methods I've just talked about give you hundreds of waves a day, whereas Kelly's pool is using the foil, which needs to be reset each time. And because of that, you only get 120 waves in a day. The advantage, however, is there's a lot of control. You can change the foil, the depth, the angle, the speed, and create a lot of different types of waves. I've not seen a barrel quite like Kelly's in any other pool. Having said that, the Texas wave pool, I've not seen an air wave anything close to that. So each one has its advantage and I think the technology is just gonna get better. What's it gonna cost to serve Kelly's wave pool? In the high season, I'm gonna take high season, I got some notes here. It's 50 grand per day, right? If you get a group of 10, that's 12 waves per person, that's gonna cost you $415 per wave. I don't know. It's just out of reach for a lot of people, but it sure would be a dream. I can't wait to see what's coming with this. So back when the X Games was still in Los Angeles, a little more than 10 years ago, I used to take my son to expose him to skateboarding, and half pipe in particular, which is something that I loved when I was a kid. We built ramps in our backyards, <laughs> courtesy of the Florida construction boom. But um, we were actually at this event, sitting in the audience, watching Sean White absolutely go off. 
he, it was like watching Gabriel Medina surf this year. He was pretty much owning the competition at this point. And the reason I bring this up is because I think this is what the World Surf League is trying to achieve with this Surf Ranch event. I think they want to isolate the playing field. They want to make it consistent for head-to-head -head surfing. And I think it even comes down to uh, competitors can plan their runs um, just like they do in the Olympic snowboard events. And it's a shame that the Olympics doesn't have a pool because I think it makes the action a little better for viewers so there's not two people bobbing in the water. I think we're just used to seeing that in the World Surf League, but I think it's going to be boring for people who are new to surfing. To be honest about it, the actual surf ranch event itself is a little bit boring for me. I like the randomness of the ocean. I like Mother Nature changing the wind and the tide. I like competitors seeking out set waves. I like some of the luck that's involved. Um, anyway, call me old school. But what I want to do now is jump into who I think are the top competitors for this year's event. So in talking about the Surf Ranch Pro, I think it's really important that we all understand for our fantasy teams that there are no reselects, that this is a leaderboard format. And what that means is they take the two waves from each surfer and combine them to create a score. And that score is placed on the leaderboard. The highest scores move on to the next round. 